Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a very long time. Only thing I can say is I've been busy with other work. Now that I have new work, I will have a bit more time to make these hopefully a bit more frequently. And if you have already been following me on Instagram, then you'll already know that I have moved to Erbil, which is in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. A lot of people think of guns, bombs, explosions, but where I live, that's really not the case. Fair enough though, that's, that's what a lot of people see on TV in the past. However, when I think of Iraq now, I think of awesome friends, really resilient people, beautiful mountains that I can go and hike, and hands down, the tastiest figs on the planet. So today I'm going to be showing you sort of a brief overview of some of the places that I've had the chance to go to already. I'm not going to include everything yet because it's been over a year, about a year and a half since I've moved. Just to give you an idea that there is more to see here than just some kind of barren desert, which is what usually what people think of when they think of Iraq. And it's definitely not as scary as a lot of people portray it in the media. I actually did an interview about my time spent living here. I can send a link to that below so you can get a little bit more details as well. But I'm gonna take you through some places I've gone to, which I didn't cover in that interview. I will also leave some links below about the Kurdish region as well and some background on the history of the people here. There's a lot of things to know. I'm not gonna get into it now. So if you're interested, I'll leave some links on some articles that you can read to get a better idea. Now, first stop of my list that I'm going to show you today, number one, where I live is Erbil. There's lots of work there, super safe, which is why a lot of expats like myself, and while you'll find them living there. The main square of the citadel, it's basically the biggest main attraction of the city. On either side of the square, you'll find the bazaar. There are entrances to the maze of vendors inside around this building like this one. And once you're inside, it's pretty easy to get lost as I have many times. Although if you continue straight in one direction, eventually, eventually you'll, you'll reach the outside. So all good, it's not that big. <laughs> so in the bazaar, you can shop for things like gold, fabric, produce, strange knickknacks, and basically, everything. Now we're going to come to the very center of the city, the actual citadel. This location is thought to be one of the longest continuously inhabited sites in the world. More than about 6,000 years, this sort of castle looking fort is actually called a tell. It's a hill where generations of buildings have basically built on top of each other. And that's how it becomes this higher mound in the middle. This one is actually 30 meters above the main plank where the modern city of Erbil is. Inside the citadel are several museums. There's a textile museum. There's one that has gems and different stones. And there's even a nice little theater where live performances still actually take place, which is nice and interesting for those living here. Now, moving on from Erbil, I'm gonna take you to a nice little hiking path outside of Shaklawa. And this is on to Safin Mountain, the main mountain by Shaklawa. This is about a 30 minute, 30, to 40 minute drive from Erbil. So it's someplace I go actually kind of frequently. Now in Shaklawa, there's a cute souk, which is a market area. You can walk around and get some local food, also various knickknacks <laughs> and little souvenirs. But generally I come here for just quick mountain fix. Now, believe it or not, this is taken in the fall after a very hot and dry summer. Yes, woof, green, I know. Uh, Iraq is not all desert to those who may be thinking that, especially in the spring season, which I'll show you later photos, it does actually get quite green in a lot of areas. I think this valley in particular, it's very shaded from the sun, so I think that's why it stays green. Uh, generally, from Erbil, there are many hiking groups. In this video, you can see that there are other people with me. A lot of the times they're organized groups because most of the trails in the country are not very established. You can't just rock up and do them on your own. And it's also good to uh, go with groups in case in case you're going close to any borders because border areas in the country are kind of a no-no. I wouldn't um, go anywhere there by yourself.
Now, you can also drive up to Safin Mountain. There is kind of a huge plateau. And that's where I took this photo. Interestingly enough, you can actually see snow there in the winter. Again, not just a desert. In fact, in these winter months, the last little while I've had to have my little heater going and it is actually a little bit cold. From Shekalawa, I'm gonna take you to our next stop, which is a bit north of Erbil, in a cute mountain city of Acre. Acre is, was first inhabited in the seventh century. So it's another one of these old continuously inhabited cities. Again, a lot of these cities around this area are considered the oldest, which is actually quite interesting. As you can see, the buildings in this city are really tucked into the valley and the slopes of the mountain, which to me looks very picturesque and nice. There is a waterfall you can go visit in the city. It's a little bit uh, touristicized, <laughs> so they've made it into less of a natural water throw and there's this kind of like theme park type of thing. There's lots of little shops and knickknacks and souvenirs you can buy. It's not the worst thing, um, but I wasn't particularly interested. You know, I'm more of the nature side and stuff like that. So that's why I didn't show you that. Um, but what is nice in Acre is that you can walk around and see the views of the mountain and the city below. Very nice. An important annual event that I want to mention here is the Kurdish New Year, which is called Nowruz. This takes place on March 21st, but actually on March 20th, that night is a awesome fire walk festival and they also have fireworks as well. So you can see the procession of people with the fire going up the mountain. And I actually did this last spring. So it was super cool to see. I'm just gonna let you listen and watch to the video for a minute so you can actually hear how many people are there and how it was an interesting sort of sin scene to be. Pretty cool, yeah. Uh, I was actually very impressed with the fireworks. I compared it to a lot of the events we have back home, like Victoria Day weekend back in Canada where there's lots of fireworks and it was pretty big like that, in my opinion. So from Acre, I'm gonna take you southeast of Erbil towards Suleimania or Suleimani. Most of us who live here just refer to it as Suli. Actually, it's one of my favorite drives. It's much better now. There are actually good highways that have been paved out before. It was actually quite treacherous from what I've heard from locals here, but now it's pretty accessible. It takes you about two and a half hours to drive all the way from Erebil straight to Suli. And the area is super nice because there's a lot more higher mountains and some mountains actually have snow on it. Uh, lots of nice places to stop and just take in the scenery. But a nice stopping point on the way to Suli, about halfway-ish, is called Dukan Lake. Around the lake, there are several places to stay. I can't recommend any myself because I haven't stayed there overnight. Usually when I visited Dukan Lake, I've actually been staying in Suli. One time I was there, I came with my friends and we actually paid a guy to take us in one of the boats that are sitting down below by the shore. He offered us to take us into this beautiful gorge. I mean, to me, I saw this place and I was totally shocked. I had no idea this existed. No one had ever told me about it, even though by that point I had been there well over six months. <laughs> and it looks like something out of Lord of the Rings or something. I mean, I don't know, super cool. And the driver also let us stop in the middle of the lake for a view of the landscape around. And it was also epic. So if you do go by Dukan Lake, I do suggest take a little boat ride. It doesn't have to take very long. I think we were out for maybe 45 minutes or so, and it was well worth it. So further southeast from Dukan, you can actually reach Suli. So passing by the lake, um, you have Suli and the, the city is actually surrounded by mountains as well. And Suli is an awesome place for street food. I didn't show you any pictures myself. 
but I did do a walk around and at night there are t tons of carts that come out and they're selling everything like different meats, falafel, sandwiches, lots of stuff you can get. Super awesome, super cheap. Sorry, I don't have pictures of that, but <laughs> maybe I can find some from someone else. But I do have a cute little picture of the bazaar here. The bazaar is not in a big little center circle. It's a bit more of like a long street, but again, it has pretty much all the same things that the bazaar in Erbil would have, everything from fabric to gold to produce. You actually can buy meats and like whole livestock animals there in these kinds of markets. So it's kind of interesting. Another really cool spot to check out is, uh, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, Guis, Goisha Mountain. Someone's gonna correct me there and leave me an awful comment, but I'm just gonna spell it out for you. I'm gonna leave a location in the bottom of this video so you can get there. Um, basically, this little spot is up way up on one of the hills of the city. A lot of locals come here to have a little bonfire at night, just to hang out. We did go up at night for a view of the city. I imagine during the day it's just as nice, um, just you know, you're seeing all the landscape instead of all the lights. From here, folks, we are heading back to Erbil for the last highlight that I'm going to be sharing. And this one is just a leisurely drive around Shashturab, which is about 30 minute drive outside Erbil. Now, my friends and I decided that we would just go for a little drive on an afternoon off to just enjoy the green views around the hills. This video is actually taken during the springtime, like I mentioned before from about March, April time, that's when everything starts to get very green in this region. So it's very popular. You'll see people just picnicking all over the place, literally side of the road. You'll see lots of people going out for drives, etc. So the drive we took was through this Sheikh Durab uh, area. It's a little bit of a random place, but I'll leave you the link to the location below in case you wanna have a drive by. There's also lots of opportunities to picnic around this area and many others near the city if you just go for a drive. So if you just like driving around, it's kind of nice. For me, just driving around some of the areas around Kurdistan are really breathtaking, especially if you come during this time when it's very green. That's about all I'm gonna share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it really sparked some interest in you to visit so this more of an unknown place. If you have any questions about some of the things I've shared, please leave me a comment below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.